other human beings, it is me. Let's get into the full INFJ personality breakdown. I was hoping to do this over the last couple days, but a million and one things have come up, so we're gonna get into it now. As per, we are going to talk about the cognitive functions that make up the INFJ's mind, so the functions that the INFJ is using to make decisions, also known as the judging functions, the functions that the INFJ is using to take in information, also known as the perceiving functions, and then we'll talk a little bit about what the expression is for the INFJ, the kind of vibe they tend to give off, or at least in my opinion, like how INFJs usually tend to come across. Then we'll talk a bit about strengths and weaknesses for the INFJ personality, and we'll finish off with my, you guys know is my favorite thing, we'll finish off with the examples list at the end. I'll give you a list of things that just strike me as very INFJ, and that will really hone in what we're trying to share with you here. Okay, so let's get into the INFJ's cognitive functions, the functions that the INFJ is using in order of the top functions, so the function they're gonna be using 100% of the time and just sort of their core, their core value function, and then we'll move all the way down to the lowest function for the INFJ. So the first function for the INFJ, the one that they're gonna be using the most is introverted intuition. Now, introverted intuition, we spoke a little bit about it before, Introverted intuition is a convergent form of intuition. So it's a form of intuition that's mainly focused around organizing and synthesizing different informations and different concepts. Introverted intuition wants to bring everything together and compile it into like one system, sort it out, make sense of how everything works there, and then it gives introverted intuitives a sense of what the path forward might be. It also gives introverted intuitives a peculiar sense of what the path behind them has been. There's a sense of this is, it's kind of like a linear thread through time. And I think that the relationship that introverted intuitives have with time is actually one of the most interesting things because they tend to be able to tune into someone else's perspective from like how that might end up and then also tune into perspectives from why people did this thing in the past and how it's kind of led to this. There's more of an organized sense of imagination and introverted intuition is largely focused on the cause rather than the effect of something. So if you have someone, an INFJ, using introverted intuition as a dominant function, they're not so focused on like what's going on. They're focused on how that thing came to be. An introverted intuitive is, if you're sad, an introverted intuitive is going to be asking you, what has happened to make you sad? What's going on in your perspective? What are you believing right now that's actually contributing to that? Where maybe like a, an extroverted sensor is just gonna be looking at your situation and thinking like, what's going on there? Like, why, why, are, you, why are you sad right now? Are you, are you, what, is, what is this? But yeah, so that's, uh, so that's introverted intuition. The second function that the INFJ is using, so the second or parental function right next to introverted intuition is extroverted feeling. So extroverted feeling is all about ethics. It's not really so focused on what I feel, what's going on inside of me and how I feel, like morals and how I feel about this situation. Extroverted feeling is a lot more focused on what does the group feel? What do you feel when you're sitting in front of me? And extroverted feeling has a very strong, it has the ability to pick up on like subtle nuances and shifts in the emotional atmosphere or temperature. So someone who's quite high in extroverted feeling, like an ENFJ or an INFJ, they're gonna have a fantastic ability to pick up on when and where things might shift with people. And we'll talk a little bit more in the strengths and weaknesses about how this can be a good and a bad thing. But in the negative sense, INFJ can just absorb other people's emotions, essentially. They have the ability to take in so much data from what someone else or a group of people are feeling that it can completely blindside how they feel. So there's a sense of, um, there can be an, a sort of an emotional energetic saturation that occurs here with the INFJ. But extroverted feeling is also fantastic at being able to sympathize with another person's situation, recognize the pieces that came together to have got that person in that situation. And it's a fantastic supportive function, as you can imagine. When you combine introverted intuition and extroverted feeling together, 
you tend to have a fantastic psychologist or psychoanalyst because you have someone who is very focused on the potential causes of how this emotion came together and you also have someone who is very good at actually registering like directly registering what that feeling is so some of the greatest infj some of the greatest psychotherapists um I'm, in my mind have probably been infjs like carl jung was an infj the third function just below extroverted feeling there for the infj is introverted thinking this is the function for the infj that causes the most confusion around them i think I think a lot of people have the idea that an INFJ is just very emotional and kind of a pushover and always connected to the group and what's going on with other people. But what I think this, this oversimplification often misses is the fact that most people don't tend to just naturally gravitate into their secondary function. That usually is the function that is you're growing into it. It's the function where you actually have to, it's your gift to give to the world as you develop it and as you grow into it. So most people are utilizing their third function a lot more. And this is the same with INFJs. If you talk to INFJs a lot of the time, you'll notice that they can be very interested in data. They can be very interested in specifics. They do tend to have a very, there's a strong sense of having a framework of how things play out. It's like introverted thinking is all about having a system that makes sense. It's logical. It's not even necessarily rational. It doesn't need the thoughts and the opinions of other people. Although it might entertain them, the tie is always settled with what's logical to me. So when you have introverted intuition and introverted thinking locked together, to me, you basically have a kind of seer or a sage or a philosopher or an occultist of some kind. You have someone who can notice the moving, changing nature of phenomena, how the causes come together, and then someone who can fit that together into a system. I'm thinking of a system like John Kabat-Zinn meditation system, how he has kind of like an intuitive understanding of how meditation has evolved over millennia, and then he's fitting that together to create a system to make it easier for people to assimilate into it. So introverted thinking is all about logic, categorizing and making sense of something in very clear terms as is determined by my mind not necessarily the groups the final and the lowest function in the infj ego is extroverted sensing or extroverted sensation extroverted sensation is all about what is actually happening and real it's taking in information from the real-time physical space and environment it's this microphone, it's, uh, it's this t-shirt, it's what's actually going on, it's what exists. Now, you can imagine that reality is quite mysterious for an INFJ in the sense that they have a dominant sense of how did what is come to be, but they also have that connected on an axis with what actually is right now. And there's a strong theory in the MBTI community that the lowest or the fourth function in the ego stack tends to be the aspirational function. It tends to be the function that people are looking to grow into. The way that I would understand this with the INFJ, and we'll, we'll talk a bit more about this in the next section, but the way that I would understand this with the INFJ is that once there is a level of understanding and a framework that's achieved through that introverted, intuitive, introverted thinking lens, and reality is synthesized together and there's kind of like a consistent sense of what makes sense, then reality can actually be experienced. Where if you take someone like an ESFP who is using extroverted sensation much higher up there, they, I think what tends to happen for them is they tend to experience it the other way around where they'll go actually interact with the real world, the real world and reality, and they'll just kind of move through what they're doing and then over time, there'll be a sense of developing an introverted, intuitive, theoretical understanding and like of how their life actually played out. Where the INFJ is a complete other way around. And that's why for INFJs, a lot of the time, the latter half of their life is probably the better half because that introverted intuition has to be able to, it takes a long time for that to turn into something that you can have a level of understanding to connect with the physical space and the reality easily. So extroverted sensation is something that the INFJ tends to struggle with a bit because they're so focused on the causes rather than just the outside effects. They're a state of consciousness type as opposed to being a state of affairs type. 
But when that starts to develop, they're obviously going to have a degree of mechanical, mechanical, uh, mechanical mastery. They're going to have a degree of understanding of their environment and they're going to know how to plug those other functions in so they can actually explore the world in a way that's cohesive for them. So that's the fourth one. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the INFJ's expression. How does an INFJ tend to come across? What kind of vibe does an INFJ have? So the first thing that I notice for INFJs is that there tends to be kind of a mysterious vibe. And I want to hone in on this and give you a really clear idea of what I mean. When I say mysterious, for the INFJ, it's almost like as if they're experiencing something different from what you guys are experiencing together right now. It's like they're privy to something that is not necessarily in the conversation that you guys are having. It's like they know something that you don't know. And I think, again, when you have someone who's an introverted intuitive and fitting everything through introverted thinking frameworks, there's a sense of the inner world and the inner reality is so rich and so vivid. And then the extroverted reality of extroverted feeling and sensation, can, there can be kind of a juxtaposition of these two things. And I said in my oddly specific video how INFJs can sometimes feel like they can't really click in a group because it can be difficult to actually, you're so tuned into the feelings of other people that it kind of, it feels quite different from what you're actually like in your introverted space. So that's the first thing I noticed that for INFJs is a sense of mystery and a sense of maybe being a bit reserved and connected to something that is not quite being readily said in the conversation. I noticed that INFJs are a peculiar mix of highly sympathetic and connected to the feeling tones and the emotions of other people. They have a lot of capacity for that, but also very direct, also very straight to the point a lot of the time. And I think, again, this flies in the face of the stereotype of an INFJ being kind of a pushover and never really being direct with their words. But I actually find that INFJs do tend to be quite direct because I think when they understand what they're thinking and they've developed to the point where they feel comfortable to say what they're thinking in that situation, even though they know it, they're very aware that it might have a certain effect on the emotional atmosphere, there's a sense that they're not coddling you just because they're aware of your emotions, they're not coddling them. Um, they can be very direct and they can go for the throat with things because I think this is the way that they make sense of things in themselves. It's like, this is how this works. I've figured it out over time. I'm seeing this thing in you. And I think similar for INF, INFPs as well, we wanna be able to express directly, right? We wanna be able to say what we're thinking in that situation. We don't like to be held back. Um, so that's another thing I notice. I notice that with INFJs, they tend to have many layers in that if you were in a friendship or a relationship with an INFJ, as you spend more time with them, as you get to know them, you're learning, like you're kind of like graduating through layers of their personality. Because again, a superficial interaction with an INFJ can be that they're just connected to the emotional atmosphere and they know how to be what is needed of them in that situation. But as you actually get to know them more and as they start to let you into their inner world more, it can be surprising and I think it can be pretty often for people to turn around and realize that they don't really know much about this person. They don't really know much about what's going on in them. They're just out there connecting to the environment and maybe they're like dropping some knowledge here and there, but you might not actually know what they're like. So the, the theme that I'm giving you here is that the INFJ's expression is quite mysterious. They're mysterious, courteous, good-natured, nice a lot of the time, but mysterious and someone who has a lot of depth, someone who has a lot going on inside and is going to take you a while to understand. And I think that it's worth spending that time to understand the INFJ as well, because as they start to take you through their own inner labyrinth, you can discover amazing treasures, just the same with the INFP. There's so much going on in there and the way that that can mix with your life as they're connecting themselves to you with that extroverted feeling can be really fantastic. So the image of kind of a mysterious yet very knowledgeable, I mean, I've called them the alchemist in these videos because I think that's also a feature of them. They're able to bring together different elements of life and transmute them into different concepts and ideas and pass them forth to the world. 
So that's kind of how I'd explain the INFJ vibe. So let's talk about some of the potential strengths and weaknesses for the INFJ. Start off with strengths. The first major strength I notice for INFJs is their depth of understanding. And I don't mean in the sense that they're just hoarding knowledge and that they just have all this knowledge for the sake of it. Because the INFJ really actually wants to understand for the sake of understanding. Again, you have someone who's really focused on the causes of how things have come together in the past, how this system has been built. They tend to have a sense of penetrating into what the thing is and understanding it at a very deep and very intuitive level. So if you're talking to an INFJ about a problem or about a situation or about a theory, they they tend not to have a superficial understanding of it. They, if, if they're actually invested, if they're invested in general, it means that they've let that thing in to their introverted intuitive framework. So they're going to want to have a good understanding of it. They're going to want to follow that information. If they're interested in you, they're going to want to understand you deeply. So depth of understanding, I think, is a major strength for INFJs. So expanding on that point of depth of understanding, introverted intuition has this incredible ability to, like the way it looks in my mind is there's sort of like a magnetic pull to the next piece of the puzzle that is needed to fit that framework together. I really noticed this reading uh, Carl Jung and also a lot of Carl Jung's contemporaries. There's a sense of he's kind of ruminating and thinking about something in life or he's trying to solve some problem. You can notice this a lot in, um, a, lot, in a lot of his writings. He's trying to solve something in his life. And then there'll be some clue or something will kind of come to him like almost magically out of the ether. And that might be quite a dramatic example, but I think in general with INFJs, there tends to be a sense of knowing there's just like this magnetic pull, the next thing. I'm thinking about this problem. I'm thinking about this person. And instead of just deducing all the data and making sense of all the little p, it's like, no, this thing can kind of just come to me. So I think the introverted intuitive ability of an INFJ connected to that introverted thinking makes them very philosophical in that sense. They have the ability to just pull in the next piece that's needed there and make sense of the whole system in this really magical, intuitive way. So hopefully you get what I mean by magnetic pull. There's, I'm wondering this thing, and then it's like, oh, okay, it's that thing there, actually. That's pretty cool. Another strength I notice is that there's a strength in being uh, what I would say is quite earnest for INFJs that I've met. There's a sense of being earnest and doing the right thing for the sake of doing the right thing. Not because it's necessarily going to move them forward in a system or a structure or get them some kind of recognition. Those things would all be secondary or tertiary. There's a sense of, I want to be able to do the right thing in this moment. And it's because I think with introverted intuition, the function of introverted intuition is kind of observing the mind. It's observing your mind and observing other people's minds in situations. And when you have such a close observation of your own system, you don't tend to want to just defy against things and do things in an unethical way. So I notice there's a sense of being quite earnest for INFJs, and I think that's a really lovely quality. It can come off as very loyal and very admirable to me. The last thing I'll talk about is the X-ray vision phenomena that can sort of come with extroverted feeling. There's a kind of emotional X-ray vision to someone who's an extroverted feeler and an introverted intuitive nonetheless. There's a sense of you can read very subtle distinctions, granular distinctions in emotion. So this is why I think INFPs and INFJs connect really well a lot of the time. Because the INFP can move through all these unique feeling tones that they sometimes don't even know how to express. But the INFJ can pick up on that to some degree and vice versa. There's a sense of being able to connect at the feeling level very deeply because the feelings that both of these types have and both have access to is very deep. So yeah, a sense of being able to read into an emotion or an emotional atmosphere and really make sense of these little details and put them all together is something I noticed for the INFJ. Let's talk about some of those potential weaknesses for the INFJ. So one big one that I notice is paradigm lock. Again, NI, TI, introverted intuition, introverted thinking. Every personality type, their major weakness in their ego is going to be the looping between their first and their third function. 
when NI and TI get in that kind of loop, there tends to be a sense of being caught up in one point of view and one perspective as though it were the absolute truth. So there can be a strong attachment to a theory or a model. And I notice that the way this can come out is like a paradigm lock, because how can you really grow and expand yourself, anyone, if you're not willing to explore different perspectives, different points of view, expose yourself to new information, to new models, you're not just going to be learning one thing. But if NITI gets uh, caught up in something and it's using it for some defensive reason, I notice there can be a strong sense of paradigm lock and like not really wanting to let go of that perspective a lot of the time. It's, it's, it's sort of a function of NITI looping. The second weakness, and this isn't really a weakness in the sense that it's a character flaw, it's more of just, I noticed there can be a bit of a, a defect for INFJs here, is like we said, they have that X-ray vision with that extroverted feeling, but it's not just like there's a surveilling of the emotional atmosphere from a completely objective, removed standpoint. I think there's often a sense of being actually connected to what's going on in the atmosphere and having, and that has some kind of impact on you a lot of the time, INFJ. There's a sense of, I can feel these emotions that are going on around me and it will have an effect on me because I'm open to them in that way. So just like an INFJ might be able to absorb something very beautiful, something very inspiring, very motivational from another person, they, on the adverse to that, they might also be able to absorb something very dark and very negative from another person. So there's a sense of being quite open in the emotional atmosphere, and obviously you can see how that can go bad as well as, as good. I mean, you're literally absorbing the weight of someone else's feelings. This can be a problem if you're around someone who's very toxic and is not really um, you're not really benefiting from that relationship. You're just taking that in, or you're just at work and someone walks in, they have a horrible aura, and you just pull something in, and it's like you don't really have the ability to, you don't really have the control over that yet to know how to sort of remove yourself or sort of do something with your energy so you can stop that, um, there can be a bit of an energetic assault there, I think. So that's a potential weakness. To expand on that, I notice there can also be a weakness in reverse for extroverted feelers in the sense that they actually are quite conscious of, the, of what I just said, of how you can absorb emotions from other people. And this can be so painful for some INFJs and ENFJs alike that I notice there can be a sense of like, a, you know, I often hear people say that INFJ door slam, and I'm not saying this is just the whole reason that happens, but I think it's a part of it. I don't think that you would feel the need to slam the door on someone in your life if you didn't feel at some level that they were threatening you emotionally. And if you're taking in emotions that strongly, and you're taking in feelings that strongly, I do think there can be a sense of uh, walling yourself off sometimes. And like I said, this might be necessary sometimes to draw a boundary so people can't influence you emotionally all the time. You do need your own space and your own energy to do that. But if you completely cut people off and you try to dampen your extroverted feeling, you are effectively um, halting your whole growth as a person. That parental function, that secondary function of extroverted feeling for you, INFJ, is really important for you to be able to grow through life. We need that function. The parent function is taking care of the rest of us. It's connecting us to the world in the case of an INFJ. So you can't just close it off. So I noticed that there can be a weakness in slamming the door and kind of trying to hold everyone at an emotional distance where it, it just doesn't really work if you're trying to grow as a person. It's a potential weakness. The last one, and a bit of a bonus weakness. I feel like I've kind of harped on about um, what it can be like to take in too much and what it can be like to keep people too much at a distance. I think this is a fine balance that an INFJ has to strike. I think it's part of your life path as an INFJ. The last one though, is just a, just a little bit more on that, is the sense of you don't wanna be over attending to the emotions of other people. It's slightly different from just absorbing them, but sometimes you can engage with other people's emotions and you can be over attentive to the point where your needs are not really being met. I mentioned in the oddly specific video how a lot of INFJs can feel as though their relationships are essentially imbalanced because they're giving so much more than they're actually receiving, especially at a feeling level. 
And this can be negative if you're if you're giving too much and you're over attending to the emotions of other people, but you're not giving yourself space to actually utilize your intu- intuition on an introverted level and make sense of situations for yourself and yes, get in touch with how you feel as well. Um, so that's the last one there. They're the weaknesses for the INFJ. Okay, so my favorite part of these videos, let's give you an example list. I've explained this before, but I, I just want to reiterate when I give these examples, I'm not trying to tell you that only INFJs are doing these things or that these things are created just by INFJs. I'm just, the reason I'm giving you these examples is to give you a sense of what these cognitive functions really feel like. I'm trying to give you a sense of the atmosphere of this personality embodied in an example. So don't take it like, oh, that guy wasn't an INFJ or whatever. It's like, no, these things are just supposed to give you an idea for what the INFJ vibe is really like. And I want to give you real world examples um, other than just um, theoretical examples about a person you might meet. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first example I have for you for INFJs is Carl Jung and Jungian psychodynamics as a whole. Just like the idea of Jungian psychotherapy. If you look at other forms of psychotherapy, historically like Adler and Freud, there tends to be this more here, here's the way it is approach. And then there's kind of just like, yep, that's the way it is. And we're moving forth with it um, like that, right? There, there's the theory. Where if you read Jung, Jung has a sense of always being constantly curious and fitting more and more and more, looking beneath the surface and integrating more and more and more into his frameworks, right? And the whole reason that personality psychology really even developed, the whole reason Jung initially wrote psychological types in like 1920 was because he noticed how much of a difference there was between Adler and Freud. He observed that how could two people see the same material so differently? And this led him to discover that there were different cognitive functions that different people shared. And his whole idea of making sense of mind, looking beneath the surface, and looking beneath what, what appears to be now for the underlying truth. His sense of the collective unconscious, archetypes, Jung in general strikes me as a very INFJ kind of thing. And he was apparently an INFJ as well. So that's the first example, Carl Jung and Jungian psychodynamics as a whole. The second one, a little bit different, is Stoicism, actually. Stoicism and various similar Greek philosophies of that time. Stoicism, especially with the NITI thing, strikes me as a very INFJ kind of system. There's a sense of here are the virtues that I live by. I'm investigating myself and I'm kind of taking myself through like a self investigative process. I'm making sense of what am I doing in my life? And am I acting ethically around other people? Am I being moral? Am I being good to my fellow man? And there's a sense of holding oneself together and connecting to the universe and having this eudaimonic connection with reality itself. That's kind of the more esoteric side of Stoicism. A lot of the time nowadays you see Stoicism kind of touted as like a, it's like have discipline and be a man. It's like got kind of like some of that like Mogtau energy to it. But really when you actually read meditations by Marcus Aurelius or anything like that, any of those texts, you start to see that, uh, you know, Stoicism actually has a very esoteric component and when they talk about things like amor fati and eudaimonia and actually reaching a sense of congruence and harmony with reality itself so that's also something that strikes me as a very niti system another example would be integral theory by ken wilbur the understanding that we're gonna not only are we not we're not just gonna look at reality like the way i see ken wilbur's approach is we're not just gonna look at reality and look at life we're gonna look at how like a million other people look at reality and look at life. And we're going to delve in with like a scalpel and understand how all these perspectives come together and synthesize into one big framework of understanding of reality. And when we pull all that together, we're going to categorize those things and make sense of them over time. So we have this beautiful, intricate system and level of understanding of 
not only how our bit of reality works, but how all reality works. Ken Wilber's work often has this kind of approach, and even if you read his books like No Boundary, he's not just sort of lost in some non-dual vision. There's a sense of making sense and categorizing these things so the mind can have a better recognition of how these spiritual phenomena work. We're really starting to touch on the quality of a developed INFJ in my mind. I think a lot of INFJs are really drawn towards philosophy and spiritual concepts because of the holistic element of it. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be spiritual, quote unquote, but there tends to be a holistic understanding. There tends to be a drive to pull together different kinds of information and make them out to be one bigger system so we can understand a lot of things at once. So Ken Wilber's integral theory and other similar theories Um, I mentioned in the INFP video about how spiral dynamics strikes me as a very INFP system. But yes, there's also a relation to INFJ too, just from a different angle. The INFP, it's more of a broadening out and understanding all how like these systems coexisting. The INFJ, it's more like we're broadening out to understand how they exist, but the main process is organizing and synthesizing the information into a coherent um, structure and model. So another one. The last example I've got on this list is actually the justice system. Um, This one I was kind of back and forth on. It doesn't seem to really have the same oomph as the the prior three. But again, although there are problems with the justice system, the original idea of justice itself, of there's wrongdoing and imbalance, the world is not fully egalitarian. The idea that there needs to be a balanced system that we can pass people through so we can adjudicate the right thing in this situation. We can make sure that you did the right thing or we can make sure that you didn't. And although the justice system is like obviously very corrupt and there's many problems with it and it's very hard to apply that to um, every single society in the world, the original sense of a justice system, of being able to acknowledge what other people have to say, other people's feelings and emotions, and being able to pass that through a trusted system that can adjudicate whether it's wrong or right or good or bad or how much time you're going to have to serve as a punishment or if there's no punishment or if it was a wrong accusation strikes me as kind of like someone it you can imagine there's utilizing like that how did this all come together with the introverted intuition and then also connecting and caring about the feelings of the group with making sure things are right and the jury and everything else. So the justice system is a bit of a strange one, but uh, definitely want to put that on there. Okay, so that is the full INFJ video. I wanted to make this a bit sooner, like I said, but uh, but we got to it now. I'm going to be heading to Japan over the next couple of weeks, so there won't be a video um, in that time period, but I'll post about that on the community tab in the channel. So when I get back, we will continue with other personality types as planned. Thank you so much for the support, all the new subscribers, the likes, the comments. I, I'm just, I'm overwhelmed with how many people this is reaching and how, like, a positive effect it seems to be having on people. So thank you so much if you're tuning in. I really appreciate that. If you got value out of this, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Help me build up the channel. I really appreciate that. I hope you're having a beautiful day. And that's me.